Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be your Son, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, creator of all. We have come together today to welcome the Reverend Lawrence R. Lyon, who has been chosen to serve as Rector of Christ Church Bay Ridge. We believe he is well qualified and that he has been prayerfully and lawfully selected. To our well beloved in Christ, Lawrence the Lion, Presbyter of the Church of God. You have been called to work together with your bishop and fellow presbyters as a pastor, priest, and teacher, and to take your share in the councils of the church. Now, in accordance with the canons, you have been selected to serve God as rector of Christ Church, Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. This letter is a sign that you are fully empowered and authorized to exercise this ministry, accepting its privileges and responsibilities as a priest of this diocese in communion with your bishop. Having committed yourself to this work, do not forget the trust of those who have chosen you Care alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. By your words and in your life, proclaim the gospel. Love and serve Christ's people. Nourish them and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. May the Lord who has given you the will to do these things give you the grace and power to perform them. Given under my hand and seal in the village of Garden City on the 11th day of June 2022 and in the 13th year of my consecration. Lawrence, do you, in the presence of this congregation, commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility? I do. Will you witness this new beginning, support and uphold Lawrence in his ministry? We will. Let us then offer our prayers to God for all his people, for this congregation, and for Lawrence, their rector. Lord, we are that all who have been called to live to 
good news of Christ may have the courage to follow him in the path of service and self-sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the president and all civil leaders, that God's plan for the unity of all people be present in their work and concern for the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the Episcopal Diocese of Long Island will continue to hear God's word more clearly, understand it more deeply, and have the courage to carry it out. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Spirit will be in our hearts and its power in our hands to transform our parishes into communities of love, which by word and deed will proclaim God's love to all the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that we will be a community which gives peace to the restless, the anxious, and the despondent, we pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayers, that we will be a church position enough to bring courage to the fearful and hope to the cynical, we pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayers, that we will learn to be at peace among ourselves despite any differences, making us a sign of hope to the world. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer, that we, like the early Christian community, will join in continuous prayer and sharing of our goods. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer, that the power of God's love may consume us, so that we may exercise our ministry of reconciliation with courage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, that the eyes of our hearts might be open, not only to the hope and promise of God's power, but also to the needs and dreams of all those around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up. And things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Joshua. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The word of the Lord. Psalm 146 is in your program. We will read it in unison. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, 
immortals in whom there is no hope. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. A reading, from the, a reading from the book of Ephesians. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. He himself granted that some are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part, it's working, each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord.
Christ according to John. Glory to you, Jesus said to his disciples, As the lover, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask Him in my name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please be seated. Now, before the liturgical police crack down on me for using that Easter greeting, even though we are now one week into Pentecost, I want to assure you that it is quite intentional because I want to highlight that today's liturgy is actually an Easter liturgy and we are wearing white for this reason. With Easter, the theme of newness is emphasized. How God's love and sacrifice make all things new. There is a new creation and a new understanding, as well as old things made new and revealed in new ways. We are given new ways of thinking about life, our bodies, and our relationships. Everything is new, just as the creation of the earth appears renewed with things like beautiful flowers, the roses, the trees, of the season. The Easter promise of new life is truly among us with today's prayers of celebration and institution. And you all have already agreed to support and uphold this new beginning, now officially with Father Lawrence DeLion as your rector. Easter moments like this, provide an opportunity to consider and even reimagine the familiar in new ways. And how appropriate, as we know you all have actually been waiting for this institution for several years now. And so that is today's invitation, to enter into the Easter reality of new beginnings and new creation even though you have already been sharing ministry in this place for quite some time. And to be clear, this is not all about Lawrence. This is a partnership of mutual ministry. Priest, people, and our Lord, all working together in unity for the spread of God's kingdom. Bound together by word and sacrament, 
in service to God's people right here in Bay Ridge from the Verrazano Bridge to the 69th Street Pier in this vital part of the dominion of the sea as our diocese is sometimes known. Today's gospel also reminds us of the charge and mark of discipleship, which is to follow Christ's example, to love as he has loved, and to abide in his love. These gospel words are spoken by Jesus under intense circumstances, immediately following the Last Supper, on the night before his death. His final words of message, to follow his example, to love, and to abide. The scripture is also a call to remember the basics of who we are as Christian disciples, and to once again take up our common vocation. Our identity as Christian disciples means, first and foremost, that we are followers. We are called to both journey with Jesus and to follow his example. We have been given a clear model of Christian love and service by Jesus. And that not only are we called to personally accept his example, as with the washing of the feet, we are also called to replicate his example. We also remember that we are a Eucharistic people. For on the night of this same gospel address, just before he suffered death, Jesus instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, what we know as Holy Communion. We have that gift of a perpetual remembrance of his sacrifice, as well as a way to continually experience God's presence in our lives, to abide in his love. Shortly, we will gather around the altar to remember this ritual and to be knit together as one body. We will kneel at our Lord's altar to receive his body so that then we may become Christ's body in the world. Finally, we are reminded that we also find our ident identity as children of God. The conversion that God offers requires that we shed our adult attachments and become humble like little children. Living in obedience to God's will, we must take off our outer garments and be willing to lay aside our earthly standings in order to be both served and to serve. Only with this new posture are we able to truly receive God's unconditional love. Jesus draws us to himself just as a loving parent pulls in children. And keeping his commandments allows us to be nurtured with this love. Jesus' final directive today I chose you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, is already at work in this place. You are faithfully expanding and discerning new ministries to meet the needs of the community, feeding God's people. You are working hard to faithfully steward your resources as tools for ministry, including this building and the grounds. And you are blending old traditions and new ways of thinking to abide in God's love. Such good work is well underway. And now, together, you must continue to discern and evolve. Now, this would not be an institution homily, I think, if it did not include a lovingly mild roast of your new rector. <laughs> so here goes. Last Good Friday, I arrived to assist, only to find that your faithful rector had been slaving away with the IT department 
for something like four hours, desperately trying to get that night's, that night's live stream to work. Incredible devotion of service and self-sacrifice on the church's most solemn day of the year. And now I dare say, as your canon for stewardship, not the best stewardship of time. So Lawrence, you have my official directive and permission to not do that again. <laughs> Next time, just bag it. On the other hand, Lawrence has also been known to spend hours at hospital bedsides and in family waiting rooms in what he calls old-fashioned pastoring. He's even been known to cook Thanksgiving dinner himself at parishioners' homes. And here I say, while yes, perhaps a bit overboard, God's people can certainly use more of this old-school personal touch to pastoral care. Text messages and Facebook, while essential, just do not extend the same level of care. So thank you, Lawrence, for this example and witness in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in just a few minutes, there will be lots of exchanges of induction gifts. And let us remember that these are not transactions, they are relations. They are symbols of the embodied ministry to which we are all called, and you now re-enter together. Use as your guiding post Jesus' final directive today, to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And remember that we are very well equipped here. After all, this is South Brooklyn where every fig tree can well attest to the fertile soil right beneath us. Continue to tend it and grow in this mutual ministry. We are counting on you. And more importantly, God is counting on you. Alleluia, Christ is risen.
Lawrence, accept this Bible and be among us one who proclaims the word. Amen. Amen. Lawrence, take this water and help me baptize in obedience to the Lord. Amen. 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 Lawrence, obey these comments and be among us to share in the counsel of this time. Amen. Amen. Lawrence, take this bread and this wine to be among us to break the bread and bless the cup. Amen. Amen. Lawrence, let all these be signs of the ministry that is mine and yours in this place. Amen. O oh Lord my God, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Yet you have called your servant to stand in your house and to serve at your altar. To you and to your service, <clears throat> I love myself, body, soul, and spirit. Fill my memory with the record of your mighty works. Enlighten my understanding with the light of your Holy Spirit. And may all the desires of my heart and will center in what you would have me do Make me an instrument of your salvation for the people entrusted to my care and grant that I may faithfully administer your holy sacraments and by my life and teaching set forth your true and living word. Be always with me in carrying out the duties of my ministry. In prayer, quicken my devotion. In praises, heighten my love and gratitude. Preaching, give me readiness of thought and expression, and grant that by the clearness and brightness of your holy word, all the world may be drawn into your blessed kingdom. All this I ask for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, welcome your new rector. Peace of the Lord be always with you.
Um, this brief announcement, there is a lovely party prepared for you in St. John's Parish Hall, which is right through that door at the conclusion of this service. There will be plenty of things to eat and drink. We hope that you will be with us. And I want to thank all of you who came today. I want to thank all of the people, especially Carmen, Gail, um, and, and, and all the people who provided everything that we're going to enjoy today. All of you who took part in the service, I want to thank all of you for everything you have done to make this a great day. Thank you, Suzanne, for being here. And you can rid me anytime, it's all right. <laughs> and to our musicians um, who bless us in every way. I promise this will not be a second sermon. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. <laughs> but I want to extend my congratulations to this congregation, uh, not only for the long endurance and waiting for this institution uh, because of COVID and uh, all of the restrictions that were placed on us um, as we've come through uh, this pandemic, and for your support of Father DeLion and his ministry as he moved from moment to moment with live stream and, and, and showing services either on Zoom or on live stream. I, I'm grateful to all of you for the example and witness that you've shown during, during the pandemic and holding things together in some very difficult moments. And so I, I want this as a celebration today to be a, a, in gratitude to all of you also. And as Canon Colhane uh, said in her sermon that it's not all about Lawrence, although he probably thinks it is. Um, <laughs> it really is all about you and the people of, of, of Christ Church and the ministry that you provide in this community. And so I want to thank you all. Uh, I want to thank the clergy who, on a, what is a very busy Saturday morning, uh, coming and being a part of, of this liturgy and for putting all the, the, the pieces together that made this celebration possible. For those of you who may not be aware, although today is the Feast of St. Barnabas and, and some of our clergy are wearing red because of, of the blood of the martyrs, which is a really important celebration for us, tomorrow happens to be Trinity Sunday. And the clergy really ought to be home right now, figuring out how they're going to keep themselves from heresy uh, tomorrow <laughs> in trying to preach about the Trinity and what the Trinity is. So I am going to be uh, tuning in. I'm going to be here back in Brooklyn all day tomorrow uh, on the other side of, of, of the borough in, in Canarsie. Uh, but I'm going to be tuning in to see what Lawrence DeLion does as the new rector with Trinity. And then I will be contacting the wardens about whether or not we should be taking the keys back. <laughs> it is a delight to be in your midst today. And thank you for the warm welcome. And thank you for creating this opportunity for us to do this. Uh, even on this late date. It is the tradition in the Episcopal Church on the day of the celebration of, the, of, of new ministry and the induction 
um, of the new rector to have the, um, the offering that is taken up go directly to the rector's discretionary fund for his or her use as outreach in, in, the, um, in the neighborhood. Um, I would encourage you, sisters and brothers, to be generous in this offering as we uh, uh, help to, to support and encourage Lawrence in his ministry here in Bay Ridge. My sisters and brothers, let your lights so shine before all people that they may see your good works and glorify God which is in heaven. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. The basins are there for anybody else. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through the great Shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promised to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in your word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Barnabas and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that Lawrence may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we, with him, may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.